Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Herb Garden Network podcast. and designer behind Herb Garden Knitwear and it's wonderful to be back with a new podcast episode. I have seen that there are some new people who have subscribed to this channel. It's wonderful to have you here. I'm so happy that you found the way to my channel and I really hope you'll enjoy what you see. Um, I am a knitwear designer located in northern Germany. I have been designing patterns for about uh, four and a half years now. Um, it is very important to me to have uh, high quality patterns. I have been working with a professional tech editor from the very beginning. I have always tried to be um, very size inclusive in my patterns. I have never published a pattern uh, that has less than 10 sizes. Some of them have 18 or even more than 20 sizes. And um, I really try to um, have instructions that are very easy to follow, even for beginner knitters. So um, if any of that is interesting to you, um, you've come to the right place. Uh, and if you are just interested uh, in knitting podcasts, um, people chatting about their works in progress, about their finished objects, about the yarn that they used, then um, this is also something uh, that I do and this is uh, exactly an episode like that. Um, I usually try uh, here on my YouTube channel to um, have uh, a good balance between um, episodes where I just uh, chat with you, talk about everything that I'm making and also have some uh, informational content. Um, in the earlier episodes I have a rather large segments um, about yarn substitution and how you can really find a good uh, substitute yarn when you want to work a pattern or um, what you have to think of and keep in mind when you are swatching and all those kinds of things. So um, in general I uh, always am open for um, any suggestions so if um, there's some topic that you really want to, to um, want me to talk about, want to hear um, more information about, then just please let me know in the comments. As you might have seen, I'm not uh, as active here on YouTube as some other YouTubers. I try to um, go back to um, like a rhythm of like one video per month or so. Um, while I have been uh, making knitting patterns for quite a while, uh, this is not my, my job. Uh, I work as a software developer during the day, so I already spend a lot of time in front of a computer each day, so um, I try to keep all this extra screen time, like editing the video to a minimum. Um, if you want uh, to keep in touch um, a little more regularly, then you can either follow me on Instagram, uh, where I really um, share pictures uh, quite often. And um, if that's not uh, your kind of jam, then you might uh, want to consider subscribing to my newsletter, um, which you can uh, do on my website. And I will link all these options in the description box below. Um, the newsletter is absolutely free. You can subscribe anytime that you want. And um, the newsletter is the place where I obviously share all, all pattern releases, all new test nets, all important information like that, but also a little bit of um, like works in progress, things that I'm working on behind the scenes. And um, it's also uh, the only place where I share my uh, special newsletter, newsletter subscriber discounts. So you can subscribe and unsubscribe anytime you want. I will never um, flood you with, with emails. I only send out the newsletter um, if I have actual news to share, not on a, 
on the schedule. So um, there's not something like uh, one newsletter per month, but only um, you will only receive it if there are actually news to be shared. Yeah, I think that uh, was um, a little introduction. Maybe, maybe I'll share a little bit more about what I love to knit personally. Um, I'm a big fan of um, non-superwash rustic yarns. I really love when they smell a little sheepy and are a little rough at first, but then bloom really beautifully um, after washing. And um, I love uh, to knit all kinds of uh, spring and summer knits and also um, very woolly warm um, sweaters circular yoke sweaters with color work yokes and uh, drop shoulder sweaters um, are really my favorites. And I also love to knit um, shawls, crescent shaped shawls, triangular shawls, um, any, anything like that. Uh, and um, about a year ago, I discovered uh, sock knitting for myself. And since then, I really love to knit socks too. Basically, I think there's not an item that I have not knit so far. I have hats and I have made mittens and <laughs> almost anything there is. So um, if any of that uh, sounds uh, like you might like it too, then um, I'm happy that you're here and I hope uh, we will spend a lovely time together. So um, get comfortable and I will start talking about um, my news that I want to share with you today. Um, this summer tea that I'm wearing is my Tallulah tea and uh, I have uh, cast this on almost a year ago in April of 2023 and now it is finally available on Ravelry. The pattern is out, you can get it and it comes in 18 sizes. I'm very very happy with this uh, tea it um, was a pleasure from the beginning to the end. Uh, I loved knitting it. These textured stripes that um, they have, maybe I come a little closer so you can see the stitch pattern a little better. Um, it has these, these chain-like stitches. And uh, it's um, always the same um, as with knitting any kind of stripes, no matter if there are different colors or texture like this, you really just want to do just another repeat, just another repeat. And I could not stop knitting on this and it went really, really quickly. It um, is made with 3.5 millimeter needles. Um, the yarn is a Sandness Garn uh, Line. And um, it's a lovely blend of cotton, viscose and linen and it's my absolute favorite summer yarn. I have used this plenty of times and um, I can't get enough of it basically. It's um, very soft to the skin, it has a lovely drape, it's very airy and, and very lovely to wear. And um, it really holds up well with washing, not like some other cotton yarns that get really stiff. Um, this was really, is really nice. Yes, and um, after I finished my sample um, and uh, graded the pattern and uh, sent it to my tech editor and everything, then um, about last summer, I think it was August or something, um, the testnet started. And uh, the testnet uh, went uh, all the way um, until uh, March 15th and um, now my testers have finished their teas and there were no um, larger issues with the pattern. There was uh, one minor thing that I um, could fix and uh, yeah, now the pattern is out there for you to enjoy. And I have uh, received wonderful feedback from my testers. Um, they love the fit. They also felt like it was very fun to knit and that you couldn't stop because of these um, engaging stripes and it was fast and, and lovely and yeah it was uh, a wonderful group and I'm very happy with it and um, yeah what else do you need to know it's it's knit um, bottom up so you cast on the bottom edge you work um, in the round until you split for front and back and then you um, close the shoulder seams with the three needle binder 
and there are short rows here in the shoulder so you have a little larger um, end here um, up at the neckline and a little shorter end here where the sleeve is and that makes uh, the fit here really really beautiful and uh, this construction is completely seamless I know that there are a lot of people out there who do not uh, enjoy bottom-up knits and I plan to do another video in the future um, where I try to explain that there are reasons why sometimes bottom-up might work better than top-down. Um, there are several reasons I won't get into detail um, in this video because I think this is a very large topic and I really want to address it properly. But um, yeah, so there are reasons to knit some things from the bottom up and um, even if you uh, don't prefer that method, maybe just give it a try. I had uh, several testers say that this was their first test knit or they have never uh, knit bottom up and they were really surprised that uh, it was not as bad as they thought. And uh, some people say um, in usual that they are afraid that bottom-up knits uh, will not fit them as well because they have difficulties trying that on. I, I think it really uh, is just something that you can get used to. So don't be afraid. I promise I've graded this very, very carefully. Um, I had over 60 testers who um, knit this tee and uh, I have had not one complaint uh, about uh, the fit. So um, just give it a try. It's a very quick project and uh, I think you really will enjoy it. After I have finished uh, this sample last summer, so around when the test net started, I decided that I had not enough yet of this lovely Tallulah T stitch pattern, so I decided to cast on Oh, I have issues with the sun. A Tallulah cardigan. It has the same stitch pattern. You can't see it at all, can you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe like this. It has the same stitch pattern and it is um, a v-neck cardigan with uh, a lovely one by one rip button band. It also has um, shoulder shaping with short rows. It has um, sleeves, uh, straight sleeves without any decreases. Just towards the cuff it's getting a little bit shorter. I have finished this sample um, a few weeks ago and uh, I I'm in general very happy with the yarn I chose. Uh, for this cardigan I chose um, BC Garn Loch Lomond. It's the colorway 16 and um, it's uh, a tweedy yarn that um, has some lovely tweedy speckles in it. And um, it gets absolutely super soft um, after washing. It's a 100% woolen yarn. It's got certified. And I have used it for several other projects before and I really enjoy it. I have already started to write up the pattern for the Tallulah cardigan. But I'm not going to write it down exactly as I knit it. I want to tweak it a little bit so that you'll get um, a perfect version. Um, one thing that I want to change is a very minor, very personal thing that's probably not important at all. I really regret a little bit that I only um, used four buttons. For some reason that I cannot uh, explain properly, I would have really preferred an odd number of buttons. Three buttons are a little um, uh, too little, I think. It will probably gape open um, between the buttons, but um, maybe five buttons would have been nice. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm, I'm not I'm very happy with these buttons in general. I have um, used very simple 
you can't see that at all, can you? Very simple um, plastic buttons. And um, I chose these because they matched uh, the color the best. And I have used um, a contrasting um, piece of yarn, a mohair, that matched uh, the Tweety Naps to attach the buttons so that um, the color um, appears again in the, on the buttons. And while I like that idea, I'm not um, quite sure I like these buttons in general. They, uh, I'm not sure. The, this yarn is such a lovely yarn and such a good quality yarn and those buttons really kind of don't, don't match it very well, I think. So um, I will probably um, change them as soon as I find buttons that I like more. And um, the other thing that I want to change is um, a little bit uh, the depth of the v-neck and um, which relates to that directly is the, the width of the back neckline. While I can wear this totally fine, it does not uh, slip off my, my shoulders um, at all. Um, I think um, the fit can just be a little bit better. So I'm going to make changes um, when I write down the instructions for the pattern. Yes, but in general, this is how the cardigan is going to look like. And um, of course, I will keep you updated on when this will be ready to be tested, which will probably be around May, I, I guess. I'm not quite sure yet. But this is um, a pattern that I'm currently working on. I have already started to um, grade it. I'm not quite done yet. Um, I also plan to do um, 18 sizes for this cardigan. And um, I have also started to write down the instructions, but as I said, I really want to tweak it a little bit, so that will take me some time to do. Yes, but all in all, I have a new cardigan. I like it a lot. I have been wearing it a lot. It's warm and um, I, I really love uh, the yarn that I chose. So um, we will see how this will, um, you know, come along the pattern, how it will come along uh, over the year. Then in um, last year I also knit another summer tea. This is my uh, Reveries tea. I'm not sure if I have shown this on my YouTube channel so far at all. This is a super drapey, super drapey summer tea and it has um, beautiful eyelets both on the neckline, the sleeves, and also on the bottom hem. And uh, this test knit has recently started. There are a few testing spots left for um, very small and very large sizes. Also um, 18 sizes for this one. If you want uh, to check out the testing spots that are still available. You can find the link to the testing call on... Um, uh, so you, f you can find the link to the testing call on my website and the test is um, taking place on a platform called Yarn Pond. Yes, so, but I will also link it um, in the description below. The deadline for this project is um, in the middle of um, July, so there is plenty of time. I was very surprised that a few of my testers finished this like in a week or something like that. It was really, really quick. But if you are not uh, such a quick knitter or if you need a larger size, don't worry. You will have time um, until the middle of July. For this tea, I used um, Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. An absolutely lovely summer yarn. It's 100% silk and it is very very drapey and it is a silk um, that is produced without um, killing... How, how do you say that in English? Other silkworms? I don't know. Like the, the tiny creatures that make um, this uh, silk thread. They are not harmed uh, to produce the silk. So um, that is something that I really love. 
So this is the Reveries tea and um, it will um, be released later this summer. <laughs> when I finished, I think there you can see a pattern here now. Um, when I finished this tea um, last year, I decided that I wanted to make or was it the other way around? Either way, I'm not sure if I started the sweater first and then did the tea or the other way around, but there's also a sweater. <laughs> so it has the same um, eyelets on the neckline and on the sleeves. And also on the bottom hem. And um, <clears throat> I have uh, shared the progress um, of this sweater uh, on Instagram if you want to see um, under the hashtag the Herb Garden Knitwear, so um, HGK Mindless Sweater. I will put the, the hashtag somewhere if you want to um, see the progress of making this sweater um, on Instagram. And um, I used um, uh, Isaiah uh, Alpaca 2, I believe, um, held double for this sweater. And I'm, I'm not sure if you can see the color at all. It has it's a, mainly a dark blue, but it has lovely hints of um, both uh, purple and teal and it has an incredible depth. This color is absolutely mind-blowing in real life. It's called Midnight. And um, this sweater is one of my all-time favorite sweaters. I'm not sure, I don't think I have yet recorded any footage um, of me wearing it, or maybe I have, and um, for the video, I have, um, earlier this year, I have put out a video of all the things that I have knit in 2023 and I think this sweater might be in there so if you want to see um, how it looks uh, worn then um, you can check that out. It is um, just like the tee, it is a circular yoke construction that from the top down and um, it has uh, straight sleeves with very long ripped cuffs and it looks absolutely lovely. It has like a, a poofy um, effect um, where the rip starts. And um, this is one of the favorite things that I have ever made. I have not yet started to write down the pattern for this one, but I absolutely plan to do that. I'm not sure um, when when this will happen. I'm, I don't want to give you a timeline that I then cannot um, live up to. So um, I, I'd say I would Prob no, I, I won't. I won't. I'm not sure. <laughs> I will focus on the Tallulah cardigan first and then um, I probably start um, with this one. But um, of course, I will, as always, I will keep you updated as soon um, as this one is ready to be tested. There will be um, a post on Instagram and also in my Ravelry group and I will also, of course, send out the newsletter. So there are plenty ways um, to get informed if you really want to know about, about this one. Um, in the beginning of this year I have knit a lot of socks. I moved in January so I had a lot of boxes to unpack and things to sort out and clean up and, and tidy and everything so I was um, very in the mood for simple and quick projects that are very satisfying and not very complicated so um, I opted for several pairs of socks. I cannot show them to you um, all. I cannot show all of them to you because um, I have gifted away at least three pairs, I believe. But I have some of them here. This is the pair that I most recently finished. It's a very simple sock. Um, I'm so sorry about the light. There's really nothing I can do today to make this work better. I Hope you can see something. This is my personal favorite sock recipe that I came up with in the year that I started sock knitting. It's a three by one rib sock with um, heel flap and gusset construction. Very, very simple, very quick to work, very good fit. 
Um, and this is um, the way that I uh, work, you know, vanilla socks whenever I'm in the mood to do that. Maybe you can see it like this, I'm not sure. So this was like a self-patterning sock yarn. Yes, so socks. And um, I also um, did uh, a sock that I plan to release. This has not a name yet and I have so far only shared it with my newsletter subscribers. It's um, a sock with a kind of rip and cable pattern. It's, I'm, I'm sorry that it's so difficult with the lighting today. I hope you can see this at least a little bit. But you cannot, right? So this um, has like a, a little bit of um, a cable, but it's very easy to work. And as it is mainly ribbing, um, the sock really fits very snug and very nice. Also, heel flap and gusset construction. Maybe I will try later if I can film if I can film this sock separately. I have not yet started to write down the pattern for this. Um, so just as with the sweater that I just shown you, um, it will take some time before these are ready to be tested. Because you know I always give my patterns to my tech editor first before the test net. So I have to write the instructions, grade the pattern, have the tech edited, and then it will be ready for test knitting. So it will definitely be um, several weeks to a few months still until this is ready. But I really wanted to show you because I really, really like this stitch pattern. And I really like um, this cable repeat here where um, I started the, the heel flap. I think it looks really nice. For this, um, I used a typical sock yarn. It's called um, Regia. I think some of the English because pronounce it red, Regia, I'm not sure. It's a German sock yarn, like a typical um, uh, 50 grams, 200 um, meters sock yarn with 75% um, wool and 25% um, polyamide. Uh, the colorway is, I'm not sure. Oh, it has only a number, a number, no, no colorway name, but the colorway is um, 02137. And it's like a denim colorway. Yeah, so I'm very, very happy with these socks. They are fun to make, they um, fit very well, and um, they um, are just the perfect um, mix of a quick project that is a little bit engaging because of the, the cable pattern. Um, I try once again to sh show you up close because the they are also, which I haven't mentioned yet, they are like the eyelets in, in this little dots here, like in the center of those. Can we see that? No, well, let me see if I can get some footage of these um, later for you. Yeah, but um, aside, um, as, uh, but aside of these um, two pairs that I have knit this year, I have knit I think at least three or four other pairs. Um, so 
I really am officially a sock netter now, which uh, is kind of lovely. Um, there were so many years where I had uh, avoided to knit socks, but um, the reason that I now enjoy it so much are the tiny um, nine inch circular Chaigu needles. I really love those. I don't have to um, work with double, point ne double pointed needles, which, um, you know, I can do, but I don't enjoy it a lot. Um, in the past I have done a magic loop a lot, which is also fine, but these tiny circular needles are just perfect for me. Yeah, so I think I have shown you all my finished objects for today. And uh, so now let's um, have a look at what I am currently working on. I have started a new sweater using Phil Colana Panilla. This is 100% um, uh, Peruvian Highland wool and it is um, 50 grams and 175 meters. So it is just a tiny bit um, thicker, heavier than um, sock weight yarn. I'm working this on uh, 3.5 millimeter needles and um, I've never used this yarn before so um, I'm very curious about how it behaves after washing. Um, I have started to make uh, another top-down circular yoke sweater and right now it is still very <laughs> Um, crumbled up and, and it does not lie flat at all and I really hope that blocks out as I have not worked with this yarn before um, but I have worked with this kind of construction uh, so many times. I'm just going to trust the process for now and really hope that everything will become nice and flat and beautiful once uh, I wash it. I went with um, a lovely textured stripe again. Um, maybe maybe I have some kind of favorite thing going on here, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I really love um, knits that are easy to work, have a little bit of texture so that they are a little bit engaging but not too complicated. I really love stockinette too so that I have um, like the feeling that I am accomplishing something, making progress. And for this sweater, I have um, a very um, long neck bend. I believe I worked one by one rib for about 10 centimeters, so that is four inches. And um, I'm, I haven't decided yet, depending on how it blocks. I really like those necklines that are very, um, very high. But if it's too high, like this, then I'm, I'm not going to enjoy it. In that case, I will just fold it inwards and, um, and seam it down. I haven't decided yet. It depends on how this blocks out. Yeah, but I am almost done with the yoke. It's very difficult to show you right now because I still have my needles in here. But um, yeah, I have uh, this this little texture here and um, I have not uh, too far to go until I can split for a body and sleeves. And this is what I'm working on right now and I think um, there will be, it will be um, a nice project to keep me occupied for the next couple of weeks. Um, if you're new here you might not know I am uh, a monogamous knitter. I only cast on um, a different project if I have like um, a deadline or if I have like a big project going and I cannot take it with me on, on a travel or something like that. But in, in, in usual I really just cast on one thing, knit it to the end and then bind off and then cast on something new. So I don't always have like huge amount of whips to show you I only work on one single thing um, in general. And this is, this is it right now. Earlier this year I have knit uh, the beautiful Sweet Shop Blanket by my dear friend Laura Penrose. 
Um, I made that uh, as a lap size blanket for my grandma who um, recently moved into a retirement home and is now in a wheelchair a lot and she really wanted a lap blanket to keep her warm um, for uh, the time she, she sits in a wheelchair and uh, has something like warm on her legs. And um, I saw all the other sweet shop blankets out there and I just definitely had to make one. I used um, a yarn that I bought uh, in Sweden and uh, you can find the details about it on my Ravelry page. I cannot show that blanket to you right now. I will see if I have some uh, progress pictures on my phone that I can insert in this video here because I already gifted the blanket to my grandma. But I absolutely enjoyed this project. If you want to make a blanket, then go for it. This is so much fun playing with colors. It's such a great pattern. It's very, very quick and very fun and it's a lot of guard stitch. I, I really enjoyed working it. So that's absolutely a pattern recommendation if you want to make um, a blanket. The Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose is uh, it's just a dream. I, I really loved it and I might want to make one for myself. I'm working from home a lot and I sometimes have a blanket on my lap as well and maybe I'll make one for myself in the future at some point. We will see. At the end of each episode, I try to spotlight another knitter, podcaster or designer. And in this week, I would like to introduce you to Kelly of Cocoon Knits, if you do not already know her, which you probably do. But if you don't, um, she has the most fantastic knits on her Instagram. She is a super talented knitter. She has a great taste, a great style. And I was very lucky to bump into her at the Barcelona Knits Festival last year and got to know her personally. While we had already um, uh, met met through the internet, it was lovely um, to meet her in person. We had the absolute um, most fantastic time together. She's not only this talented, wonderful knitter, but she also is the most kind and loving person. She is so wonderful to be around. It was so lovely to chat with her. So um, if you want to get to know other knitters, discover great style and support knitters who really deserve it, then please check out Kelly. She is a wonderful person. And I can't wait uh, to meet her again someday. So I think that was everything for today. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope to be back uh, with another video in April. Um, I hope you have uh, a wonderful day where you are. I hope that uh, the weather is in a way that you enjoy it. If you are in the Northern Hemisphere, you might um, have a spring right now here where I live. Um, we do have a lot of flowers that are in bloom right now, but the weather is still very mixed. When I put up uh, my setup here with a camera and everything, everything was, everything was very gloomy and gray. And as you saw throughout the video, we got a little bit of sunshine, but that is probably the first bit of sunshine in, in quite a bit of time. So I'm going to wrap this up now and uh, try to see if I can go outside and soak up uh, whatever sun we have. So I hope that wherever you are, you can enjoy your weather too. Um, I'm sending hugs out to you all and uh, wishing you all the best. See you soon. Bye.